Today I thought I'd get the expert on. Roberto Rojas knows all about Miguel Almiron, has close bonds with his family, uh, has watched him in, well, in his time in the MLS. So I'll ask the expert, Roberto Rojas, what he thinks Miguel Alm Almiron is doing wrong and what he can do better. It's been interesting. I mean, you know, when he came to Newcastle just uh, back at the start of the year, there was just a lot of promise. And obviously, I could be the one to to assess, as all of my other colleagues that have been talking about him, about how great he's been able to perform in Atlanta, you know, essentially how he's been that pivotal person and I think that pivotal player for that team that led to winning an MLS Cup um, and eventually getting that move. Because it was already destined that he was going to get that move to Europe uh, obviously, Newcastle happened to fit the bill uh, to be the team that worked because, you know, you had a manager like Rafa Benitez that demonstrated the ambition and, and really could count on him as, as kind of like a fa father figure. And, you know, if you actually just go back just a couple months, even into that first season, I mean, it was great. I mean, yeah, he didn't score or contribute to assist, but, you know, he was a pivotal player in trying to contribute to the team not uh, getting relegated that season. You know, he was able to be that important player to you know play the passes and create chances for players like Perez and Ayoli Perez and Salma Rondon to get the goals and to help him stay up. So it was that. And I think what Rafa Benitez was able to do is try to put him in a position and give him kind of a kind of a, a lending hand, if you could say, you know, obviously coming into a new nation, um, not knowing the language as dominant, you know, Rafa Benitez knowing Spanish gives him that kind of a, of a help in a way and you know the fact that he was the player that Rafa wanted you know it, it it's turned out to be well it, everything looked like it was going to happen uh properly until Steve Bruce comes in and you know changes his position you know changing from a player that is generally shifted into the left uh, or centrally that what uh, Rafa was doing in a few months uh with Miguel moving him to the right and it just hasn't been working out well. So what I've been able to see, unfortunately, because, you know, th there is that kind of promise there. There is that talent. There is that potential. But I just feel like a player of his caliber isn't being utilized the way that he should be utilized um, when it comes under playing under Steve Bruce. You knew there was a player in there, and he has all the, all the key components of being a top, top player, raw pace. Um, it looked like he had superb finishing ability when he was in the MLS. Um, we, have, we are yet to see that, of course. Um, but even in his first few months at Newcastle, he would, although he didn't score anything, he was crucial to that um, that three amigos attack. Um, mm -hmm. He'd create the space for Perez, and I think that's what made Perez score so many goals in that mm -hmm. period of the season. Any ideas as to what could be making him look uncomfortable in the Premier League in comparison to time in his MLS? Well, I mean, it's, it's like you said in, in your in, in your previous statement. I think it's it's a different league. You're looking into what is a huge golf and talent. You know, this isn't to to mess around with MLS and saying that it's a bad league or anything. But you know, it's huge that you're comparing MLS with probably the best league in the world. And then, and with that <laughs> comes a big, big, big reality check on how you see yourself as a player, how you really are capable of playing. Because let's be honest, if you're playing in the top league. You know, you can play in Spain, you can play in France, Italy, Germany. But when it comes to England and where all the attention goes in there, that's where the standard is different. You know, you're more physical, you know, much more uh, playing, you know, in the air. You know, you're doing so much in such a short amount of time that you, you can't make mistakes like that. And I think with Alminon's case, you know, you look at him, he's what, 5'9", he's a slender guy, you know, not exactly uh, the biggest uh, player out there. And, and for me... You know, it, it was going to be difficult, and I had said that when he when he joined. You know, the fact that is he able to catch up with the physicality of the Premier League, and you know, we've seen early on in in his first season how you know he was getting fouled by the players because you know he's a dangerous player, as he said, with using his pace and his ability to you know to go past markers and and to be dangerous onto attack. But you know, obviously, that makes him more prone to getting fouled and you know even getting injured, which we saw I think in the game against Southampton. Uh, back in April, um, it, it shows that, you know, this is a player that really needed to go step up to the standards of what the Premier League is. And, you know, he obviously got stronger. He said that he did get stronger, albeit it's not shown 
from his physicality of a huge, tremendous um, transformation, but he is stronger as as what he has said in previous interviews. But I, ju I just feel like, you know, you see him play and you see him be productive. It's just, I feel like the service that he's not getting is not there. I feel like he's not getting that much service. I mean, you're essentially looking at a player that is trying to track back and, and in comparison to what he did in his first season, you know, where he was able to, you know, get the ball and play it to players like Rondon and Perez. You look at him now where, you know, obviously Sack Maximum is, is doing something at least on the attack. But maybe with players like Joel, Joel Ellington or, or anyone else, you know, you're essentially getting him to, you know, get the ball from midfield, you know, even track back as a defender. Um, if needed be, and then go all the way to the front to attack and, and create those chances. And, and that's just not the style. That's not how he played. That's not exactly how we, how he was characterized and why Rafa was bought him for that much money from Atlanta would demonstrate his talent. You know? You're getting a player that is going to create chances and, and, and attack as well, but not someone that has to track back and, and get the ball from, from defense or, or anything like that. Just so essentially he's doing so much and with no little service, I feel that's what's been struggling, I think, so far in this season uh, under Steve Bruce. Brought in two new attacking players in St. Maximin and Joe Ellington. And I think it is harsh to blame the attacking players for not scoring, considering the, the jobs they have to do as like, like as the type of players they are. Like, even Joe Ellington, you can make the same case for him. He's expected to almost drop as a, as a 10 or maybe sometimes even deeper because of how deep we play. And then... Our fans expect him to run into the box from from what the halfway line. It's it's incredible what you know what our players are expected to do, and um, it's a shame that it's being brought down to them at the end of the day because of Steve Bruce's tactics. And I think we're seeing the worst of it with Almiron, and um, you know it's it's not going not going great for him. You know what key faults would you pick out of this game in the moment? Like would it be his finishing or his physicality? Well, I think with the physicality part, I think he passed that slightly. I mean, yes, he is a player that, you know, can go down easily. And we've seen that. And I think, um, you know, the fact that he has been able to, you know, get back on his feet immediately um, when he does get fouled. And we've seen that with Arafa and even under Bruce so far. That's the part that I like. You know, the fact that he's able to beat his marker on the wing or and go on to the attack and create chances. Uh, we've seen that. We see that kind of excitement that he has. The one issue I think, and you know, you did mention it. Yeah, it, it is finishing, but you know, it's kind of, kind of ironic because you know, again, he is he is more of a creator. You know, yes, it is good to finish. It is good to score goals. It creates more tension and, and helps the team obviously win. But that's essentially not his main role. That's not something that he tends to do. You know, obviously he he has scored it in MLS and Paraguay and in his previous clubs, but his main role is to work to go and, and, and cut from from the flanks and create for the attackers, be it your striker or or anyone else. I think that's what exactly the type of player he is. Another issue that I've been able to see so far, I think that he just continues to carry the ball so much that he he's so desperate for that. And, you know, he's so desperate for that goal and all the attention that has been gotten to him, uh, how he hasn't scored yet. And the fact that he's trying to prove them wrong and to go and and score it, it, it's not working because it's, you know, unfortunately his finishing is not up to par as what we thought it would be. I mean, you know, and then the, the I think the main issue again, back to the physicality part, is his diving. I mean, yeah, there is that kind of issue. And we saw that actually uh, just last week when he was actually sent off uh, for diving. He got a second yellow in an international friendly against Serbia. Um, and that that is not a, a good thing. That's not something that he's done. I mean, he's barely has ever done that ever in, in his career, at least from what I remember. And the fact that he's been able to do that under Steve Bruce and, and this new system, it's not working. I mean, maybe he's trying to find the advantage of, you know, the fact that he's not that strong and trying to to take advantage of his stature to win fouls from fouls from defenders. That's not going to work nowadays. I think now with everything that's being checked, you know, with VAR and referees being much more strict nowadays, I think that is not really going to work out. So it's a bit of a bit of you know. So you have some pros and you have some cons for what Armino is able to provide, but I think you have some more cons than pros in some of um, unfortunately. And now we're seeing these limp shots that just like trickle at the keeper or bend towards the far post, but I'm never going to trouble anybody. 
he just sort of snatches at them and he, he wants it too much. Do you think that's part of the reason? That- yeah, I think so. I think just because his confidence is just super low at the moment, the fact that he's just trying to prove something wrong and you know that he's so desperate for that, I think that's why he's becoming a bit more nervous and you know just some more rash uh, with his finishing. I think that's one of the main issues that I've seen. And, and that's unfortunate because, you know, for a team that doesn't score goals a lot anyway, I mean, you know, they're desperate. I mean, the, the team is desperate for scoring. And unfortunately, I, I don't think him being in that situation helps him or the team uh, moving forward. You know, what, like what it was like when he was in the MLS. Would he miss chances on the regular or would he, when he was in front of goal, was that feeling that he would score like there is with certain other players like Joseph Martinez in the MLS or would he miss quite a few chances? Mm-hmm. No, I think no no player is perfect. I think they all miss their chances once in a while. You know, I've seen that through his career over there in Atlanta. But, you know, he he was always the person that was able yeah. to play the pass to a player like Joseph Martinez. He was always that type of player. But uh, when he does have that opportunity to score, you know, he has scored more than just, you know, from open play, you know, scoring from free kicks, uh, you know, penalties as well. I think that's something that really has been... Uh, an issue I think for him this season is I just feel like maybe the service isn't there I mean he he has the liberty he has the space to be able to provide the ball whenever needed to be I mean you know I just think that in the system that he's working and you know we look at two contrasting systems I mean yes Rafa Benitez's system was defensive as well but he was able to prior prioritize his his attackers when needed to be and I think in comparison to what he was able to do at Atlanta, playing under Martino, Tata Martino, the now current coach of Mexico, he was playing on an attacking side. So I just feel that maybe those type of tactics is, work, is not working. I think we saw that as well. I mean, back against Manchester United, you know, the fact that Bruce was trying to contribute and, and use Rafa's uh, system that he's been able to use that contributed to the 1-0. When you saw him, you know, you know even though he didn't miss, miss that big chance, uh, he did contribute to uh, Matty Longstaff's goal in a way. So I think it's that. I think really it's that just kind of positioning-wise, where he's being played, how he's able to get the ball, and to who he's being provided, and, and just what kind of service he's getting when it comes to attacking uh, in the front. Out of the things you've seen that he's possibly doing wrong or not 100%, what would those things be? How could he improve them, do you think? Um, I think what we've seen recently, I think the big one is obviously his finishing. I think that's the one that many people really want him to see because we've been more. I think with anyone with that type of pace to go full force and, you know, we see players like St. Maximin doing the same thing as well. I think having that pace helps you, you know, beat your markers and then just going one on one the goalkeeper gives you an opportunity to, to finish. I think just he needs to be a bit more uh, comfortable in a way, but also just look at who you have here. I, I think... Going on, I think the biggest injustice that he had was missing the post, uh, hitting the post against Huddersfield on his debut at uh, at St. James's Park. I think that was kind of the the what if moment. If he had scored that, what would we talking about a different player now? But I think just that, and, and I think he needs to realize that you know that they have the players to help him. You know, Joe Ellington, St. Maxman, the Longstaff brothers, uh, Shelby Hayden when he comes back. You know, those type of players in midfield. Um, I just think that he, if he's able to contribute more up when it comes to goals, because I think that's that's the thing that he needs. I think he needs to be able to contribute to score. Because for me, I think the more glaring admission of what he's been able to do in Newcastle is that he hasn't been able to really contribute to a direct assist yet. I think the scoring, yeah, that, that happens and it's nice. But for him to not get an assist as an attacking midfielder, I think is even more of a glaring uh, issue. So I think he just needs to be able to contribute more by providing that, and he's not doing wrong to that extent. I mean, yeah, you you see that he he is you know tiring those defender his opposing rivals. You see the effort that he has. Maybe it's just too much. Maybe if he just you know calms down a little, you know, looks up uh, who is coming at the attack, be it whoever Joe Ellington, St. Maxman, whoever, he's able to play those passes and and be more of a of a contributor rather than a scorer then I think his confidence just gets a bit more boosted up. I mean, I think that's how Newcastle have to function as well when it comes to attack. I think if they're able to do more, uh, look at these players and contribute more to be able to play the pass uh, to Joe Ellington or, or, or some sort of uh, manner, then I think that's, for Amidon's case, his, his confidence will be much more boosted.
Do you think Steve Bruce's tactics are a major issue to Almond's performances, or do you reckon it's more of a personal issue? Um, I mean, if it was really more of a personal issue, I think, because this is some of the issues that I've been seeing, you know, on social media and some other articles about, you know, is he able to make it up to the Premier League? Is he up to the standards? Well, uh, the first thing I like to say is that, you know, talent like that, what we saw in his first few months on the Rafa, doesn't go away just like that. It, it can't. I mean, you, you, when, it's, when a player is special and has that talent, it doesn't go away. So... I think it's more of the system. I think just him playing on the right, a position that he's only played a few times in his career prior to Bruce using him all the season, that's not going to work because he's able to be more of a player going in deep and, 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 and trying to contribute as well, not as a defender, but rather as an attacker. You know, That's where I think is the main issue. I think Bruce is not utilizing him. And, and like I said, I think, this is uh, this is no discredit to see Bruce because I think he knows what he's doing and he obviously has the final word when it comes to how comfortable his players feel uh, in the system that works. But I just feel that just looking him in, in a position that really has not suited him and you know playing at in Paraguay, playing for Atlanta, he was always on the left as well, or playing in the center, he's done that for Paraguay, and he's contributed to that as well. So I, I just feel like I, I don't know where him playing on the right happened to show up. Was it because, hey, Maxman happened to come in and he plays in a better position than he does? Who knows? That That's that's where I see is the main glaring uh, issue, I think, for Almiron so far in the system. If Rafa had stayed, I think we'd be talking about a completely different player to what we are right now. He, I reckon he would have got an assist, scored, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera by now. And right. it, it is incredibly worrying how he's been... Like, for me, Steve Bruce's tactics aren't really fitting Almiron. Um, to cut in from the right and shoot with his left, every defend, every fullback defender is going to read what he is. Because he's, he's a predominantly left-footed player. He exactly. doesn't really have a right foot. Being directly behind the centre forward really really would help him out yeah. um, with assists more so than anything. Because it's, it's just directly feeding your striker or your wingers. Um, and that's the best way to create chances, I think. Just when is that going to happen? And it, it's it's in all of our fans' heads, and you know, it's it's one of those things that we're just going to have to wait out and we see what happens. Yeah, yeah, no, like you said, I think you know the fact that you mentioned that. You know, look at Ron Dunn, for example. You know, obviously a bigger target man, but he's able to, to contribute, and you saw what he was able to prove, and and it, and it worked. It worked as well. You know, you saw that work with Perez. You saw that work with Ron Dunn. I don't want to say, I feel like this is an, a, another weird thing, but maybe the language barrier has to do with this as well, because, you know, speaking as well to people close to him and, and from other people that, you know, his English isn't exactly at the highest level. I mean, you know, when you're looking at Rafa Benitez, who obviously is from Spain, can obviously speak to him comfortably. Data playing, uh, he's from Argentina, speaking in Spanish as well, being surrounded by all these Spanish-speaking players. You know, you remove that factor with Perez gone, Rondon gone, Benitez gone, and now just having him thrown into the deep end, expecting to do all this at once, and, you know, essentially create and score and get the ball back and do all that. That's That just makes him even more frustrated and uncomfortable. And you see that. And you generally see that. And I feel that's a big injustice on him. And, and I feel like, Looking into the future, we don't know if this will ever happen, but you know, we don't want to see a situation where he does indeed leave Newcastle and he goes succeed somewhere else. And it, and, and it then causes the debate of what could have been and if we had only helped him work in the system that would have made him succeed instead of having to make him do all these things at once. I, I have That's the thing, you don't know. Situation. You really it, don't know. He's it, it, honestly it's so like, strange. You don't think about these players. There's some players out there that are like, yeah, he's just not cutting it. We don't know. Maybe just he doesn't have that talent. Or he's just like, okay, maybe we just need to give him time. But with him, it, it's weird. It's like I'm speaking to a lot of fans, not just you, man, but just speaking to a lot of fans. And they're frustrated as well because they, they want him to succeed. And and to be fair, come on, you look at the personality he is. He's not exactly the, a controversial figure. He just doesn't speak out. He's not like a slot time type of player or or that kind of arrogance type of, of player. So in a way, it makes it hard to not like him. But at the same time, what he does on the pitch really contributes to fans' opinion. And we all have different ways of seeing how 
uh, how a player has to succeed. I mean, you know, obviously uh, there are a bit of a minority out there. That, you know, I don't know. He's not for the Premier League. He can't cut it. You know, he's not working well. But, you know, then we're, we're seeing – it reminds me. I mean, obviously, you know, this is a different type of player. But it kind of reminds me of the, the vision that people had with Perez. You know, the fact that he – had that kind of talent, but at the same time, is not contributing at the same time. It, it, we're, we're not seeing this yet with Almiron, but we're, we're kind of closely there. We're, we're looking at a player that's essentially divided opinion. Like, I, it's weird how, like, it went all the way from supporting him and backing him, saying that he's this great player and he's helping him, he's helping the team contribute, to now just shifting more into kind of a, a divided line, you would say. And I do think the language barrier is such a big thing. I've, I have never heard him speak once a word of English mm-hmm. the time he's been in Newcastle. Um, and it is it's really, it bewilders me sort of because um, I remember when Mutu joined, he couldn't speak a word of English either. And his English has developed quite far. So I'm wondering whether Almoran is taking English lessons, what he is, is doing about this situation. Well, he does. Uh, let me just retract what you said. He does know English. Um, he actually, mm-hmm. but he's just not comfortable with it. And it makes sense. I mean, when you're playing essentially all your life, I mean, yes, he has played in the United States where I uh, generally speak English and playing obviously in England, speak English as well. But, you know, Spanish speaking managers, Spanish speaking teammates, you, you feel comfortable and you don't want to get out of that, that kind of habit. So now under Steve Bruce and obviously not that many Spanish speaking players i mean you know there's portuguese there's brazilian he speaks portuguese but that's a different language but uh, I, I feel like that's not really an excuse anymore i think you know playing in the united states now in england now for two years you would think that he has some sort of significant uh handling of the language but it's just not as and you know he, he knows it but i think it's just that it's a case of not com- being comfortable with it um so i think that's one of a, another issue as well but it, it shouldn't be i think that shouldn't be the other excuse as well i think what we see on the pitch is, is different. But, yeah, that does become an issue as well. You know, Steve Bruce, you know, demanding him to do this. Perhaps it's being different to what Rafa was saying and that kind of thing. But it, it's difficult. It really is difficult to see how he's able to succeed playing in a system that really is not working for him. Roberto, thank you so much for your time. We, let's, let's hope that this indeed does change because I think we want him to succeed. I think we want Newcastle to 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 stay up i think that's that's always been the ambition now um and for a special player like him that you know not a lot of players on this team can have that type of talent we all want him to succeed but it's just it's going to be difficult the way that the system is but let's hope that we're both wrong and that he does indeed get get the the ball rolling and then contributes much more uh in the next few months you would say